You're listening. I just, I just don't care. Look, if you're 300 pounds, then you are a monster, and I don't want you to talk. Welcome back to This Is A Work. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am here to introduce your host, David Two Dogs Hayes. Oh, thank you very much, David Hensley, and welcome to Rock Hill's only premier wrestling pay-per-view podcast, This Is A Work. With me, as always, my tag team partner, Chris, the Fashion Plate Barnes. How are you, brother? Hi, dogs. Are you ready to get... Uh, extreme oh boy am i wasn't that logo pretty <laughs> it's pretty I mean, it's 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 one of those logos that you just it kind of looked like what if the wrestlemania logo was every other pay-per-views logo yeah yeah you just like wow that's that's nice and that's what i think of when i think of extreme um it's an extremely nice logo <laughs> yeah um uh, you know, I've said it once. I'm probably going to say it a hundred more times. Um, I think it's time to get rid of some of these gimmick pay per views. Just be- change the name. Just change the name. Call it call it stomping ground. It doesn't matter. It's I mean, make this one great balls of fire. Who yeah, gives great a shit? balls of fire. Uh, bring back no mercy. Um, you know, anyone Armageddon, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's uh, it's just a regular pay per view. It's we had one extreme rules match. Only one officially advertised, which was the main. There was another one that was technically that could have technically been one, but that's only because the type of match allowed for it. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't advertised as one. Well, let's talk about it. Um, so we started this show off. With Liv Morgan versus Carmella. Um, For the extreme reason of who's prettier. Yeah, that's how we started. Uh, No, well, first of all, we should say now we started off with some technical issues. Hmm. We started off uh, getting uh, the Spanish announcers. That's yeah, the audio, the Spanish audio was just coming in through the regular audio channel. Yeah, thanks a lot, Peacock. Uh, they can't do it, can Sp- they? That, speaking of that, reminds me. Um, not 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 to blow you up live, but no, it's okay. Or, or taped. Uh, what <laughs> what what tier of subscription do you have to Peacock? I don't know. Uh, okay. It's because the apparently, $5 one. Okay, that would explain why we got the random commercials when we did. Mm. Apparently, unless you pay for the premium, Peacock will just toss in extra commercials every so often, which is why we got them interrupting entrances like they did. I, You know, I got a feeling whether you pay for the premium or whether you do the cheap one, I think... Peacock is going to be garbage. Uh, I, I still think you're going to have streaming problems. I still think you're going to have the announcers chiming in. Probably, but I think that's specifically what made the commercials. Happen. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, well, so we'll get to that. Um, so I also heard that some people were even getting the French commentators, uh, <laughs> which, okay, all right. That's odd. And. <laughs> Kind of a shame, too, because um, I think arguably this might have been one of the best matches. Yeah. Um, well, I, I can tell you what my best match was. We'll get to it later. We'll, but Yeah, we'll get to it. Um, also, uh, they people did not like this pay-per-view at all all no it's it's the first in a while where it's the the majority has been what the hell is this yeah now and i'm in that camp too you know i went back and i watched it a second time mm-hmm. it wasn't as bad the second time that's fine you know it has a lot to do with it calling it extreme rules and then presenting what they did yeah that's got a lot to do if this had been again battleground stomping ground great balls of fire whatever Uh, (laughs) Mania, which it it, was for a good portion of the show it really was and we're going to talk about that too um yeah Liv and mela um yeah two 
female wrestlers that do not really get the credit that they deserve. I'm not saying that Carmella is a brilliant wrestling mind. I'm not saying that, but right. she is a decent hand in there. Oh, sure. And she showed it uh, Sunday night. She, I thought she performed great. Um, little weird that this whole match was raced, was based around who's prettier. I, I don't yeah. know. That was weird. Yeah. Mella grabs the mic at one point and just says, ah, I'm prettier than you. and Or whatever it was that she said. It doesn't matter. Literally, literally lends itself to the joke of someone, someone going, girls, girls, you're both pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, uh, Liv Morgan ends up going over. Got a huge pop for that. Yeah. Uh, she is well-loved in Ohio. Is she from Ohio? I don't know. Maybe. I yeah, Sure, why not? Why, <laughs> why wouldn't she be? Uh, I, I, thought that, I, I thought they both performed absolutely great. Um, if there was any botches in this match, I didn't notice any. They really became more noticeable at the after the, with the start of the show. Yeah, um, it was. Liv Morgan is from Paramus, New Jersey. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Well, gross. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> apologies to the people of New Jersey, but well, yeah, you, you bring tried, it on yourself. Ohio tried to claim your girl. Are you gonna take that? <laughs> Well, e- either way, I thought this was a great match. Liv Morgan goes over well deserved. Um, I gave it three Meltzers. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun match. Uh, moving into the actual pay per view, <sighs> uh, we have the New Day versus AJ Styles, Omos, and Bobby Lashley. Mm-hmm. Thank God that they put a lot of thought into this story. Um, Boy, because can you imagine if they had just figured this out, uh, you know, maybe an hour before the pay-per-view started? <laughs> Seems like a good use of a, of a new world champion is to make him the opener. I've still got a problem with that. I, I And that's just me being, I, I guess I'm old school. I get that New Day usually starts things out because it's... Well, it's a coveted spot, and you need to, you know, uh, put your best foot forward. Something that's gonna sure. pop the crowd and get them going. And New Day is better at that than anybody else on the roster, I believe. Agreed. But still, Big E is your world champion, right? Bobby Lashley is former world champion. It's there were four former. There were. Three former world champions and a current world champion in that match. There were. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Um, and probably a future one. God willing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would love to see Xavier as a, as a world champion. I think he could do it. But I, this match was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was really fun. It was dynamic. It was exciting. A couple of botches there. Yeah, uh, yeah. A couple noticeable ones, yeah. Yeah. Well, not just noticeable, like front and center. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't go I don't remember the spots exactly. Well, I, I don't either. I just remember I just, they were being... <laughs> yeah, they were just... They were unavoidable. It was just unavoidable. Like, not not something you could just like kind of like shake off as like, oh, it, you know, it it looked like a an, like an accident. Like, like, there are some botches where it's like, a guy misses it. It's like, well, you can kind of mentally explain it away. Like, if someone flubs uh, like a high, like a turnbuckle spot or something like that, it's like, oh, it's in the match. They're in the moment, and a guy can miss. A guy can, you know. Sure. Uh, it, it it doesn't it doesn't interrupt the flow of the match. There are some botches though, like I think at least one of the ones that happened in this match where it's like, oh, that's just a straight up mistake. Yeah, and you know, I also think it's very auspicious mm-hmm. that. Uh, we were chocked full of botches the whole night. And then the go home for the main event was a, was an actual planned yeah. botch. <laughs> I don't know. Just something to think about folks. Uh, <laughs> just something to bake your noodle there. I loved this match, uh, regardless of the botches. Um, 
although there were so many of them, I can't, you know, I can't go any higher than two and a half melters on this thing. The New Day go over. Um, I also absolutely hate that they did this on such short notice. Right. Uh, if you wanted to do it, why didn't you plan it out? Uh, you could have done something really great with Lashley and and Big E and, and then kind of bring in the New Day and AJ and Omos and... You know, the the one spot that I really liked was uh, almost pimp slapping. Uh, I want to say it might have been Xavier as he tried to fly out of the ring. No, it was Kofi, wasn't it? Yeah, he dove. Yeah, the, yeah, they were all. Um, they yeah, they had tossed out McIntyre. No, I'm sorry, I was. They had tossed Fault out of a habit. I get it. <laughs> they tossed out Styles. And Lashley and almost had gone over to them because he was on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> and they got over to them, and that's when Kofi went diving at him. And yeah, it was just a giant chest slap. <laughs> yeah. Um, good stuff, uh, regardless of the botches. Two and a half Meltzers and the New Day go over. Uh, moving into our next one, we have. Oh, yes. This is the this is one here. We have the Usos versus Private Party, and let me Street Profits. Who? <laughs> What's the difference, really? That's, oh my God! I'm 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 never going to stop doing that until I see a real credible difference. Now they they did some things that I liked in here. Um. But this match was sloppier than the last one. Ford had the ribs taped up because of the uh, what happened on SmackDown when he was uh, working uh, Roman, which I've always been a fan of. Right, right. Uh, I, I, I liken it back to uh, Diamond Dallas Page, mm-hmm. who had his ribs taped up for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and would too, still pull out a win. It was it yeah, was yeah when fun. when he when he went on his his huge face run. It was always to emphasize that he was always str- working hurt and he was the underdog. Right, right. Well, even when he was heel, he had the taped ribs oh, yeah. too, and he just barely pulled it out. And that was actually the beginning of his face turn right yeah. there. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was the match itself was fine. It was really sloppy. As there was some. Really bad botches in there. Uh, the Usos end up going over with a uh, double Uso splash. Mm-hmm. Or as Colt calls it, a double frog splash. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah, sloppy. Um, I started to give it a one and a half. Uh, I went back and watched it. Mm-hmm. I ended up giving it a two. Um, kind of felt bad for, for the Usos. Yes, I did. I felt bad for the drunks. Uh, one of them's a confirmed drunk. Yeah, at least one. Uh, the other one, I think, is uh, vegan. I'm not. I'm not sure how that works. I, I could. Are you insisting that's a handicap? Also, yes. Okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this match? Uh, it was great. I, I liked it for the reasons you did. Um, I th- <laughs> as much as I like the no, as much as I like the you know the. The taped ribs, meaning you know he's working hurt, and therefore he's he's more of an underdog. And I do think it's it's funny when when <laughs> when they decide that the ripped off gauze now means it's somehow more exposed than it was previously, <laughs> yeah. and now now he's in real danger. Yeah, uh, and yeah, Ford boy, he's just regardless of the botches, he is really fun to watch. He is. He's yeah. he is such an athletic person he's he he's really great in there if if we could teach him how to wrestle uh you know i think that would just bring this team together because <laughs> all we're seeing from the I, I don't see any story with those guys i never do all i ever see are just high spots and you know and that's why i call them private party because <laughs> it's the same thing that's now i'm not going to go so far as to call them you know the young bucks but because they're not that bad, but <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna go two melters on this. Uh, 
Moving into our next one, we have Charlotte Flair versus Alexa Bliss. And it does not get any better. No, this. I don't. I, I don't. I, I'm losing my words too. That's okay. I, As I, I don't. I don't know how to describe this because I don't know what really makes it something important. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I that I don't I don't that wanna, is a great tagline for this entire pay per view. <laughs> yeah, I I'm it's weird because it's just like I don't want to be harsh, but in trying to find a nice way to describe this, I'm just it, I'm damning by faint praise for the most part. I mean, really, I mean, I mean, we we can you know, we can faint praise it. I mean, look, here we go. Let, let's let's try this. The, Alexa was super over because yes. she is in her hometown. We which, know that much. Which should give you a tip off for how this went. Um, yeah. WWE's famous tradition. Oh yeah, we're gonna make we're gonna make her lose. We also found out that she lost here because she has to have sinus surgery. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. A deviated septum, I guess. I don't know. What was the that what the Alka Seltzer was for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about the Alka Seltzer. <laughs> so we have uh, botch after botch after botch. The match was not good. There's there's no nice way to be. It, it wasn't good. It was kind of rough shot. Um, and again, I mean, I mean, I, I there was some semblance of a storyline here, but. Why does Charlotte Hitler Flair need to be champion right now? <laughs> that is the third time. I'm going to keep asking it. Um, <laughs> other than she's a Flair and needs gold at some point, I... That's all I've got. Apparently. That's reason enough for me. It, if you tell a good story, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Charlotte picks up the win, and then she decides... To take it one step further. Probably the most extreme this night got. Um, she tosses Alexa over the table. And then she goes and gets Lily. Who is just minding her own damn business up there. Sitting on the turnbuckle. Just having a great time. It's I think- weird to me that they haven't, since they set her up there, just put a small little GoPro style camera in her and switch to Lily Vision. Why not at this point? If we're going to play this yeah. thing for kids, why not do that? Sure. Yeah, just it, it could be like that Build a Bear camera thing that yeah. uh, that creepy people have. Also, finding out Alexa needed surgery for something now makes the ending of this make more sense to me mm-hmm. in a meta sense because it was Charlotte decisively getting a win and then beating the hell out of Alexa, <laughs> yeah. getting the better of a post match brawl. And then destroying her precious doll. Ripped it to shreds. And then, Ripped it to shreds like Hensley's dogs will tear into one of their toys. Oh, yeah. And then leaving triumphant. Like, how am I supposed to feel about that? <laughs> so, Alexa, she she's crying and she goes into the ring in front of her hometown. She's supposed to be having a breakdown over Lily being destroyed. And she's screaming and she's trying to foam at the mouth because she popped an Alka-Seltzer when she uh, goes over the table. Right. And and she work, makes her way up to the ring. She's still trying to work it up. And now why are we saying this? What proof do we have? Well, when she's sitting at, to- at the top of the entrance... And she screaming. sat down again and wanted to cry some more. And screaming, uh, she opens her mouth a little too wide, and we see an Alka-Seltzer tablet firmly in the center of her tongue. Oh, that those those glorious camera folks! They know exactly where to be, don't they? I swear to God, these video promo packages are some of the best in the world at Absolutely. what they do. Their active camera work is Woo, some of boy, is some of the tough. most hit and miss. <laughs> some of the most hit and, like when they when they've got a great angle, it's great. And when they do what they did as <laughs> Sunday, it's great for different reasons. It's they got a lot of range, don't they? It's it, when it's bad, it's terrible, and when it's amazing, they really shine. And you know what? I don't blame the camera people so much as I blame the director who sees that happen and doesn't cut away. There you go. It's Kevin wh- Dunn. You know. 
Oh man, yeah, we could. I could do a dissertation on Kevin Dunn, Mike Carano, even though he's not there anymore. Right. But so could most people who've been in WWE. Oh God! For any length of time in like the past two to three decades. Boy, can you imagine? It's like I, I, mean, I, I think I, I, I don't know if it was you, I think it was. I was talking to you about Hulk Hogan, but it's also the same true of Kevin Dunn. It's like there's a lot of things I don't agree with uh, with Jim Cornette on, but uh, hearing him tell stories about Kevin Dunn <laughs> is just, it does make me smile. It's fabulous. <laughs> so yeah. Um, well, Charlotte goes over. Uh, Alexa pops an Alka Seltzer and shows it to us. So she did the seafood joke, and um, she screams, "Lily's dead!" Uh, the audience started a "Thank you, Lily" chant. Yes, God bless that Ohio crowd. <laughs> that was that might have been the funniest moment of the night. They, oh, easily. It was the it was it was the any time like when a wrestler re- retires or has to leave. The, you you hear that chant, and they did it for Lily. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you know what? It, it it reminds me of when Daniel Bryan had just reclaimed the world title, right? And he had the uh, he had thrown away the original belt, and he had that hemp belt, the, the vegan belt, yeah. And he started saying, "You know, I am. I imagine that the the leather that made this belt." came from some poor cow that had been you know just had been cooped up i like to think her name was daisy and they started a thank you daisy clap 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 <laughs> that's that's when being a smart is the best point moment it's, in the in wrestling yeah because you know if you leave yourself that open and Someone capitalizes yeah. on it. Oh, it's mwah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I wish I could say that this match was beautiful, but God, it was bad, man. Um, thankfully, this match ended relatively quickly. Um, I gave it one and a half Meltzers. Uh, can't be kind to it. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, And I, I'm not blaming... Charlotte Flair or Alexa Bliss. Oh, no, not at, that at all. Was, those were great wrestlers given bad material. <laughs> they were, they've were they been given bad material. And I don't know, man. I just think everybody was off that night. God, it weirdly, feels like everybody went out drinking and is just a little bit hungover. Well, it, that, makes, that makes the logo even funnier because... <laughs> no, it just it's indicative of the show you're getting in a weird way because it's like... It's extreme rules, but it's in this very clean, very colorful font. It's like, that's off. That's weird. Mm -hmm. This feels not correct, what I'm about to get. And it's very indicative of the show we got. Yeah. (laughs) So we're going to move on to our next match. Um, Oh, uh, I meant to ask, what is uh, Alexa's, like, what's the sinus issue, did they say? I have no idea. I just, I I saw that on the dirt sheets uh, this week. I mean, well, hopefully it's nothing, I mean, it shouldn't be anything major, hopefully. I wouldn't think so. It's, uh, you know, hell, it could be just she's getting a nose job. Oh, Uh, come on. uh, Who knows? She's already got boobs, uh, boob job. I mean, she does have boobs. She, got, she had boob job. She had, she had boobs Breaking anyway. news, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa Bliss has boobs. Uh, look, look, I'm having botches, too. Alert it's, the dirt uh, sheets. <laughs> it's just been a long day. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> so, yeah, one and a half. Charlotte goes over. Mm-hmm. Moving into the next one. We have a three-way dance for the U.S. title. This is the one that's unofficially Extreme Rules because, and again, th- I don't know when. Well, I don't. Well, again, I don't. I haven't regularly watched like the weekly shows, but I watch. We've watched the pay-per-views with regularity for these past few years. Sure. And I just I never caught the moment when they said, "Okay, now all like triple threat slash three-way matches are automatically no DQ." See, I always thought they were no DQ. They really weren't. They really weren't for like at least through the '90s, through like the early aughts. And you know, here's the funny thing then about it. Uh, I have went mm, well ever since we started Triple Threats. Yeah. Uh, thinking that they were no DQ, and here uh, we have we had somebody doing a rope break. Mm-hmm. We had a 10 count. 
We did, uh, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and not to mention a lot more botches. So in a match where basically no holds are barred, you had rope breaks and ten and counts, and it's like, what is the point? Literally, based on the rules presented, the ref should be there to count a pen or a submission. Right. That, that's the only reason they should be there. His job is there just officially in the match. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the match wasn't any good either. Uh, uh, Priest ends up going over. He. It was Priest, Sheamus, and... Uh, it was, yeah, uh, Jeff Hardley. Oh, right. And, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I legit forgot he was in the match. We forgot that he was in WWE until he got uh, until he got a win over uh, Demolition's uh, bastard cousin Cross. <laughs> yeah, that, he's you, the fourth member of Demolition. You mean Cardoz? <laughs> he's the fourth member of Demolition. It's Axe, Smash, Crush, and Me. <laughs> Smush <laughs> and Squish. So, um, yeah, not not a great match. Um, now, Sheamus, I, there was a, there was a legit fear toward the end of the match that Jeff Hardy was gonna win because he got on a tear near the end of it. He was over too. What I don't understand what's going on with There's this not a lot Ohio happening in crowd. Ohio. There's not a lot happening in Ohio. It's just boy, they were in love with Jeff. <laughs> wow, it's nobody's been in love with Jeff since Lita. Or, or no, I got that. No, it's you Matt. Did. I can't tell them apart. That's I, I wouldn't because they're they're definitely color coded for your convenience. I wouldn't know a hardly boy if I was kicking one. Um, yeah, th- I feared for Damian Priest's life a couple of times there. He got tossed out of the ring uh, one time where he was supposed to hang on, and he ended up landing on his shoulder, and I thought he was gonna. <laughs> I really thought he was, he he was. Thankfully, he was good enough to where he could turn himself around, get back up, and try the spot again. Right, right. Um, then another time, he he, I think he wanted to get a sleeper on Sheamus. Might have been Sheamus. Could have been Hardy. Doesn't really matter. And he ends up just losing his footing and just falls back into the ropes. Dogs, I think he might be face blind. <laughs> No, that's it's not the worst thing I've been accused of. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a really, really sloppy match. Uh, Sheamus, on the other hand, was really the shining light. Kind of, yeah. Uh, in, in this match. He he looked good. He was definitely he was the anchor work- of the match. He was working well. Mm-hmm. I Dare I say he was the ring general of this thing. Yeah, I'd go that far. He even jumped up on the top rope and started mocking Hardy towards that go home. Uh, started <laughs> doing the gyrations that <laughs> that Jeff does. And <laughs> well, um, it makes sense because not too long ago they were in a feud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over Hardy drunk driving. <laughs> yeah, so you might as well, right? Uh, <laughs> that was the infamous uh, large jar of pea slash apple juice. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, Priest ends up getting uh, the pin on this one, uh, retaining the title. Once again, not a great match. Extremely sloppy. Um, you know what's funny is that the way that match went, it would have been received a lot better, I mean, in the Attitude Era. <laughs> it would have been, yeah. Because it, that, it w- that, that kind of, I mean, kind of just, you know, general sloppiness would have fit right in but now with the very in, the the very polished kind of show they want to put on and put out there when it happens like that boy does it look like an aberration it, it really does and man uh, yeah i had to give it one and a half meltzers and congratulations to damian priest who retains the title man are we flying through this thing um moving towards the semi main event we have Becky Lynch, the man, versus Bianca Belair. Um, he, once again, uh, uh, the women had the the match of the night. Uh, yeah, this was where I would peg the match of the night. Yeah, I, yeah, you you could make a decent argument for it, and I couldn't come back with anything. Uh, 
if there were botches in this match, I didn't see any. Um, they were subtle. Like I said, it would be the forgivable kind where it just looks like a natural flow of things. Right. Um, yeah, uh, Belair is is working the power, you know, mm-hmm. versus uh, just the brawling of, of Lynch. Lynch taking full advantage of, of she does she does something that that heels hadn't been doing as much of until until Becky had started doing it. It was which was taking advantage of the hair. Yeah, uh, just absolutely going for the biggest advantage slash disadvantage that uh, Bianca has. Yeah, it, it was it was really good. Um, Becky looks great, man. Mm-hmm. She's lost some weight. She's toned up. Uh, you know, you can see the ripple in, in her muscles yeah. now. I mean, she looks fantastic. Uh, Bianca's no slouch, man. I mean, absolutely not. She she military pressed Becky a couple of times. Uh, that that was a that was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, the whole story <laughs> in this was oh the fight good. the fighting with the armbar uh, at oh the tri- yeah with Bianca fighting out and flipping and, and Becky flipping her back over and them going back and forth yeah that 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 little spot right before the go home mm-hmm. uh, which is actually one of the notes that I had here the go, the go home on this was phenomenal uh, probably the best go home of the night. Uh, now my my biggest problem with this, even though I said it was the best go home of the night, right? In the Extreme Rules pay per view, ah uh, yes. Why do we have oh, can a disclaimer? Oh, oh, would you like to? Yes, Please. because you have the floor. Sir. We were jo- I w- we were we we were been joking all night up to this point uh, about how unextreme this was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said, and I, I said something to the effect of, is tonight the night we're going to see a DQ at Extreme Rules? <laughs> and I, did we? Well, I, you know, if only I could harness this power for my personal pl- uh, gain instead of my personal pain, uh, I would be, I'd be rolling in dough. Because yes, uh, my pro- <laughs> my prediction came true. Uh, and it's like we were having a ball until Sasha Banks came back. Sasha Banks, who has been missing, it, it's just weird the way they've done this. Yeah, we don't know where Sasha's been. At and first, in- we thought, oh, this is a serious thing. Sasha's not making dates. You know, uh, you know, she's missed the last pay per view. Right. Uh, what what's going on? Summer Sun's and up big until and she's then they've been here. and up until now they've been painting it as Sasha's been ducking Bianca. Yeah. So then they yeah after that they tried to be, oh yeah no this is a work it's uh, we're trying to yeah. to do here this is part of the story. It still is not explained. No. Um. So she comes back with, I guess it's new music. It, it, it sounds like new music. Um, Runs in, assaults Bianca. Yeah, I mean, and she put it to her. Don't. Yeah. That, uh, don't don't think I'm playing this down. No, uh, no, no. I mean, she she did great, even though I've been very critical of uh, of of her. But uh, yeah. Uh, she comes in, she puts it to Bianca, and, well, Becky goes over via disqualification. Yeah, B- uh, Bianca gets the win, Becky keeps the title. Yeah. And then, and, yeah, this happens at Extreme Rules. And so we now have and a... Then, <laughs> I do admit, the afterward, Becky giving the awkward thumbs up. Uh, which and, has now become a meme I'm yeah, seeing. Is immediately, people have been comparing it to, to Orange Cassidy because <laughs> yeah. she didn't get the extension on the thumb. She just kind of had, had it up a little bit. But she's showing the teeth. With the, the smile, the, too. The it's fake. Like, the hits. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And then, and then Sasha immediately attacks her, too. Right. So um, we're clearly not done here. Maybe we'll see this at the next pay-per-view, which will be Crown Jewel. Hmm. Huh? Where does that take uh, place again? Saudi Arabia. No. It'll be Saudi mania. <laughs> that's just that. And I, again, that's just the regular October pay-per-view now. 
I guess so. They because they I, I was looking at the schedule and it's like that's the only one for October. Well, I mean, I'm scared. Yeah, so so, an, so annually, uh, wrestlers get to fear for their lives and wonder if they'll actually be allowed to leave the country once they go back. You know, I also liken it back to the last time that they did Crown Jewel, uh-huh. or or whatever. It may have been Super Showdown. I don't remember, but whatever. It was over there, and the the plane left them, and I don't remember what two. There was two or three wrestlers that tweeted like. I will never do this again. I believe one of them was Bray Wyatt. I believe another one. Problem solved for him. Yeah. I believe another one was Seth Rollins. And I want to say Buddy Murphy was one, which again, Again, problem solved for him. Two out of three, man. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. um, And uh, and that's saying something if, if Rollins is one of them that, you know, he's. He's, he's shown himself to be a, a, a very company man, but for him to actually be like, I'm not going over there again. Yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, and speaking of Rollins, I am, I haven't got to watch his uh, Stone Cold uh, interview, mm-hmm. which uh, it looks really good. That's what I've been hearing. So, uh, yeah, I gave this match a three. I could have gone three and a half, maybe even four, but. A DQ, I just I can't get past that, so I a, ended up leaving it with a three. It's a wet fart of a finish. I mean, <laughs> it is. I mean, in extreme, if it had been battleground, fast lane, whatever, fine. Yeah, sure, fine. And just on the top name of that, ruined most of these matches. Yeah, and just on top of that, I, I I remember seeing that happen and laughing so hard because the other option was for me. To basically turn into Robert Bradford at the Royal Rumble when Brock Lesnar yeah. went nuts. It's just like, because, again, that match was stellar. Yeah. Until you got to that ending. Yeah. And it was just like, why did why did you do this to everyone? This protects nothing, and it just mm-hmm. makes me mad. Yeah. It's, it's almost like they thrive on it. It's like they become stronger if they can piss people off. Well, uh, let's go into this main here. Um, we have Roman Reigns versus the Prince. Can we still call him the Prince? Is he still the Prince? I don't know. No, I mean, well, if he's officially this on um, this evening the Demon, so that's the true. Demon King. Oh, that's true. The Demon King, Finn Balor. So. Um, Really good match. It yes, was, yes. Uh, again, if there were any botches in this, I didn't notice, except for the one blaring one that was clearly done on purpose. Um, you know, uh, Balor looks fantastic. I, I think going down to uh, NXT, and yeah, I still call it going down. Uh, but I think going down to NXT has really, it's given him a second level of confidence that he did not have before. Or maybe even it's not even that. Maybe it's more of a, uh, as he's getting older, his wrestling has matured. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's it. But he he looked great. Now, as far as Roman goes, boy, that's, y'all brace for impact here. This was his best performance in a couple of years. Easily. Oh, I, w- I would say this and last month's. You think? You think? Well, well, you, what happened last month? Well, the I Cena match. Him? No, summer, the SummerSlam. The Cena it match. was. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. That was more that, Cena than anything That else. was, but Roman was actually, like I said, he was actually emoting properly and having... He, he was. And... He, and properly healing it up you know it's just like and he was doing it this time too like he actually he actually was playing to the crowd in a good way in both times right like uh, uh just like it, it's it's weird it's not really a heel thing but it was just a funny moment a good spot for him where after he drives um uh the demon into the into the crowd mm-hmm. uh he stops at the barrier and motions with his hand to paul Heyman, who hands him a mask so he can 
put it on and go out into the crowd. It, and on it, it felt like a heel move. Right. I mean, it really did. <laughs> right. One, because the meta is he's had leukemia. He's immunocompromised. Sure. So, so even if he's had, you know, uh, you know, shots for, for COVID, yeah. it's still the safer thing for him to do. But then as a heel, the idea of having to go out amongst the filthy crowd, <laughs> he would be having, it's something you'd think MJF would do. I, I look at this in a different light. Yeah. I think that Finn Balor does not care about his fans there it is. enough to put a, ma- a okay. mask on. Well, he's a demon. He doesn't, he doesn't need it. <laughs> can demons get COVID? See, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can clearly recharge just by playing their favorite song. That's that's uh, that's how a comeback works. I, it's like you don't understand how The Undertaker has been doing his thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's honestly a, a, a fantastic uh, way to motion a comeback, especially for a character you want to tout as supernatural. Because oh, why not? Honestly, I'd play it up as as not only is it his comeback. That's like like I would honestly just cut to like production people going, "What? I I can't control anything right now. What's happening with the music and the lights?" It's like I I'd cut to that at least one time to emphasize like they they have no control over this. This is happening by his will alone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's that part. A lot of people didn't like it. They Wait. they said he was like, Finn Balor was like a fish flopping around. Oh, fuck bur- off. Bur- 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 no more bur- 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 video. Fuck off. It's hulking up in a different way. It is. It it's, literally is. Yeah. Wait, it's, didn't someone hulk up at this pay-per-view? I swear someone I did. I don't think remember. so. Other than Balor. I don't. No, never mind. I'm... I'm I mistook if I was watching something else and it, it involved. Okay, never, never mind. Ignore and that. And you thought it was WWE? No, it just, it, wires got crossed because we were talking, I just mentioned hulking up. I was like, oh, something else like that happened. And it's just like, my brain went somewhere else. But yeah, that this was, uh, he, he starts, anyone who he, hates, his heart started beating to the music. Anyone who hates this hates the, uh, the idea of what pro wrestling is supposed to be. I, I, I'm I gonna mean, say that. look, it's sports entertainment, but this is the sports entertainment that you grew up on as a kid. Let's be honest. If we were 20 years younger, okay, for me, 30 years younger, 35, whatever, I would have loved this. Sure. Uh, I would have been all about it. If if I'd have been seven or eight years old, this would have been great. Uh, and that's who their audience is. That's who they're I playing mean, to are now. You, are you kidding? I was, uh, after I had started watching, I was watching Heavy and Attitude Area, and I was Ministry Undertaker, his most supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. I mean, he was, he was actually on his own Undertaker cross. And he used the Undertaker powers that he possesses to make himself fly away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he shoots lightning. Kane shoots fire. He conjures fire whenever he fucking wants. I was like, yeah. this is the fun of pro wrestling. So his comeback starts. The light, the lights go red. Yeah. And here's a guy. I, and that, you know what? That felt He's more- got defibrillators yeah. in his music. It's the idea of like he's the demon, and even though his physical form is beaten, the demon won't die. It's like mm-hmm. it's, it's and he gonna, pops which, up, which is going to be real funny in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and 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 just and it's like I I I invoked New Jack. It's like it was a New Jack moment because it once, really was the the music started playing. The, and his, he the, started whooping ass. Exactly. The like his the light went red. And his theme pops in like it just it starts playing again. It's playing the whole time, mm-hmm. and he is just on Roman, just kicking and his he ass. Gives him the sickest drop kick. Uh huh. It, it was the Mexican style drop kick, and just blasted Roman. Mm-hmm. Caught him as snug as you could. Um, rolls him in the ring. Whoops! Is it sling blades and all this stuff? He's going up to the top rope for the coup de gras, and. Here we go. And just like that, just like how that comeback starts, and it's like, you know, it's this is the magic of pro wrestling where you have this this fun comeback sequence, and it's like, as as hokey as it is when you just examine it on its face, it's still fun in the moment because mm-hmm. it does give you the emotional hook. Yeah. Well, it's gone immediately because what happens is the turnbuckle gives out from under him. And he falls, and the light's... 
poof, come back immediate. On. It was that was the thing that made me angriest the most. Was it was immediate. It wasn't just like it didn't make it seem like an accident. You know, this was also something else that I didn't notice the first go round, but yeah. I caught it on the second one. There was a spotlight on Roman laying there motionless. As oh my was, god! <laughs> there was. You oh. need to get, go back and look for some screenshots because it's beautiful to oh watch. Oh my god! <laughs> Once no. you see it, you can't unsee it. Um, I, you know that was someone's idea of like the red will make it too hard for people to see what's happening. Yeah. So just have shine a light right there at Roman, and he we are and he, he rolled him back into the ring, and Roman. Knowing where his light is, he's an actor, Hensley. <laughs> he we are, found his light. <laughs> we are so much. We are that much closer to an actual soliloquy from that man. Oh uh, my god! But yeah, so the turnbuckle drop. Like it doesn't even look like it broke. It just drops like like a dunk tank thing. Where it just, right. And yeah, like you said, lights immediately go back to normal. Music's off. Magic broken, literally. It's just like, yeah, great. Everyone's confused by what happened because they don't explain it. Yeah. It's meant to come across as some sort of technical glitch, some sort of. Thing. But there's been like no mm-hmm. prefacing that. There's been like you didn't see anyone like messing with a turnbuckle. You well, see- now they're saying that Brock Lesnar was involved. What the what the fuck ever? I, I, yeah. hey, it's it's gonna be some bullshit on SmackDown because they didn't explain it on Raw. Yeah, because it's, it's since it since it's rains and. The best explanation I have seen online is people theorizing that what caused the um, turnbuckle to, well, buckle, mm-hmm. uh, was all the a- added weight from the demon king carrying this match. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. I am. Um, it's like, I would have given, I, I honestly, I, I said this at the time. I was like, I honestly would have given anything just to see, uh, Paul Heyman kicking bolt cutters under the ring. Just, yeah, that would have, I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, that would have been great. Cause I can, um, I can buy that better than nothing. <laughs> cause, cause then all you get after that is, Everyone's confused. Uh, the demon is kind of sort of clutching at his knee. Yeah. And then Roman gets him. Yeah, gets him, hits the spear. Boom. One, two, three. And it's, and it's not like I need the logic explained to me. I get it. I get the idea of, oh, well, a, a weird circumstance just happens. It's not the Demon King's fault. So he's not, so he doesn't look any weaker. Yeah. And it's just like Roman's capitalizing on what is amazing, amazing good fortune. So, of course, he wins. But, hey... You know, it's not like a solid win. And it's like I, I get, I get it. I get what they're going for. I understand that. And but at the same time, you're calling bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> now I'm gonna be honest. That night, I was calling bullshit too. I was, yeah. I, I was like, get the fuck out of here with this shit. When I went and watched it back, mm-hmm. I was okay with it. I'm not saying it was the it was it was a terrible application of what they were going for. <laughs> no, I, it, it it went off without a hitch. I mean, that could have gone bad. Honestly. It could have, yeah. I mean, we're, you know, we've seen some shitty, shitty finishes this year. We saw a it's ring all, supposed to explode, and we got sparklers. It's also, I will say, WD playing with fire to uh, make a worked ending be equipment failure. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Especially after the AEW announcement. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? I, that just kind of just came to me. It's like, ooh, that's, oh, okay. Okay. All Again, right. auspicious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Roman goes over. Yeah. Uh, I had originally uh, thought I was being generous in giving this match a two. But to be honest, when I went back and watched it the second time, this was a great match. And sure. Roman has not looked this good in a long, long time. I mean, yeah, Cena, but this was this was better than the Cena match. Yeah, no, um, it was definitely more action. And he was really playing his heel the way you're supposed to, the way God intended. It's <laughs> sure. Uh, so for that, I had originally gave it a two. I'm gonna bump it up to a three. Okay. Um, now overall, I really, I, I can't be too terribly kind to this whole pay-per-view. I gave it a, 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 just a solid two. Sure. Um, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're, 
looking forward to Saudi Arabia, I guess. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I can look forward to it because I don't have to go. So. Well, that's true. That's, we can watch this train wreck. <laughs> ah, Jesus, man. Well, what do you think, man? It's well, it's fitting that, that Crown Jewel's in October because it is uh, effectively the scariest pay-per-view of the year. I am still <laughs> shocked and amazed that we are doing this. You got like, what, a 10-year contract with them or something? Something like that. Oh, boy. And it, I, I don't know how many millions of dollars have gone into it, but everybody gets paid like per uh, um, like per piece, like per match. You know, like they did in the old school days uh, when you go to Saudi Arabia. It's not a contracted thing. That is what I'm understanding. Like, as I, you, you have your choice here. And if you go, you're going to get bonus money, you know, for your match. It, it, I, I can and understand. it gets into the six, seven figures. So. I can understand why that's too tempting to pass up. At the same time, that is a very scary choice to have to make. Yeah, yeah, and I'll be honest. Uh, well, I would do it, but I'm broke. So. Right, <laughs> right. And again, I can't say I wouldn't either. I can't, also can't say I wouldn't be hiding in either A, the hotel, or B, the back. Oh, or, you better believe I have made myself a hidey hole of chairs that I'm hiding. That the I'm luggage hiding. is by my side so that when I get the word that we're good to go, it's like I'm going straight to the airport. I'm yeah. getting on the plane. I am not waiting for anybody. <laughs> um yeah, overall, I, I had to give it a two. Um, so, what do you think? Um, what's what's your what's your best dressed of the evening? Best dressed. Um, well, I will note it's interesting. Um, I guess there's just an, not a really a war, but there's like an escalating amount of uh, of, uh, of of wrestlers who are getting really into the custom ring attire. Yeah, uh, it, uh, highlighted by Charlotte Flair with. Not only her Venom get up from previous, but um, this time she had a Venom. I'm sorry, did I say? I meant, I meant you, Thanos. You meant Thanos. I meant then Thanos. Venom. Yeah, Venom was the, her 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 entrance robe was getting taken over by the Venom symbiote this time. Yeah, and it's just like it's it's interesting to note that that more people are getting into that because mm-hmm. really back in the day he was like Rey Mysterio was the only prominent person who would Dude, go that extra mile. Yeah. And now it's happening more and more, like with Nyla Rose. Well, if we know anything about Charlotte Flair, she is a comic book fan. Is she? No. Okay. I, have, <laughs> gen, I would be genuinely interested to, to learn that about her. No. Are you kidding me? Okay. Fine. Um, yeah. So well, what about worst dressed? What do you got? Well, I didn't well, I didn't actually give Charlotte best dressed. I was just... Oh, saying, you didn't? Oh, I was just okay. making a note. Um my best dressed, honestly, I, I think Finn. I think the Demon King. See, really, I, I I thought about Finn. Yeah, I thought about Charlotte. Right. Um. But you know, I have got to uh, keep it real, and I got to go with New Day. I, they were going to be my next one. Uh, that was going to be like my like close second with the uh, the Fuji's uh, tribute. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That man. was great. Uh, so what about worst dressed? Worst dressed. Um, who? I honestly don't don't have anyone I'd give that out to. Oh yeah. No, mm-hmm. I mean I've I've gone on about Roman, and it's just <laughs> I can't keep giving it to him. Just like he's just he's honestly he's gonna be permanently on that list until he starts dressing better. Well, he, he changed his glove. Neat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not gold anymore. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, it's blue now. Hmm. Yeah, and he wore a mask. That's you're best. right. He's won me over. <laughs> no, I um, I, no, there's no that I really I really put in at the uh, the worst dressed. I I do have a worst dress. Who was it? And that's gonna be almost. Yeah, it, it's not. Listen, we got people that can make him some gear. He doesn't have to show up. He doesn't look looking so, like a damn bum. He's not a, because he's not he's, dressed like a bum. He's dressed like Shaft. <laughs> he yeah, you're right. He's dressed like Shaft. But, <laughs> but you're right. Still, he, 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 should, he got his clothes from Goodwill because he can't find anything else. To I mean, fit in. honestly, when when he starts actually being in ring gear, it's just going to be some like something like Kevin Nash, where it's like the the classic kind of like pants 
pants uh, leotard yeah, combination. That's fine. Oh, I know, I know. I'm not. Say- I'm not saying, but I'm saying that's probably what he's going to lean toward when he finally is wearing ring gear. Did he take his jacket off the he whole time? I think. I, I, I think I he did. I can't remember, but I feel like he wore that damn jacket the whole well, time. Well, I'm pretty sure he did. He also had taped up hands this time. Oh, well, th- th- I stand corrected. I owe him an apology. Because he, <laughs> he was coming out to fight. So he's, yeah, so he's got to get properly dressed. Right, right. Um, he didn't take the chains off, though. No, no, he didn't. Well, Hensley, I, I know you ended up leaving early. But uh, from what you saw, I got nothing. I didn't think yeah, so. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I saw <laughs> nothing from anyone that night that made me go, "Oh, that's great," or "Wow, that's exceptionally bad." Okay, well, okay, I could ask you what the worst thing that you saw. <laughs> the worst thing that I saw, uh, Sasha coming out at the end of the uh, Bianca and Becky match. Yeah. Like what a massive, what an unnecessary disappointment. Yeah, because we could have done that so much differently. Oh sure, a hundred percent. Yeah, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I do have a best of the night, and it's got to be Lily. <laughs> in memoriam. Ah, uh, rest in peace. <laughs> You're in so, God's hot topic now. So I wonder what's going to happen with Alexa now, because she's going to be out for a few weeks. All right. Um, from all uh, the information that we've received, it's nothing serious. Right. But she is going to be out for a you know a month or so. Are we going to take this time to rebrand her? I was thinking that it's like maybe they they could they could, they could easily just be like, well, we're done with that now. <laughs> I mean, Lily's gone. Um, I don't know if her dolls have been selling a lot. I, I know that yeah, Alexa, her like t-shirts people, are marketable. But. seems like the people who are writing this angle just really don't have anything for it. Well, it's because they didn't start it. They, yeah. they didn't create it. So, And even if they did, they, they would have screwed it up by now. And they, they're not committing to the idea that the doll is anything supernatural or powerful. Well, they are, and then they're not, and yeah. then they are. Well, it's just <laughs> the idea of like she's Lily's not having an effect, or it's like if... If there is something supernatural powering Alexa, it's sure not showing in the ring, you know? No, I would have loved to have seen her tear the doll up and then maybe a clap of thunder and oh, the yeah. lights start to flicker. And Good, jo- good going, Charlotte. Now it's free, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, remember, I, I, I feel like I talk about this more than I should, but do you remember when we had... Um, Oh my God! I've, I, his name just fell out of my head. Uh, he had the cobra. Santino. Santino. Remember when we had Zombie Santino? You oh. don't remember that, do oh, you? Oh, I. I uh, well, I remember it specifically because they put it in one of the the um, games. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was rough, but. Since we are playing to kids, how much fun would that be? Sure. <laughs> so and now, if I had to pick a uh, an MVP of the night, ooh, uh, I, I you know what I think I got to go with Seamus. Okay, yeah. That's uh, I I think he's really the 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 shining star in this onion of a pay per view. Um, so hats off to you, Shamey. Um, Boy, did we fly through this thing. Um, I mean, it's just there wasn't a lot of substance. So. No, there wasn't. When there's not any meat on the bone, there's not a lot to talk about. Uh, so, But we have coming up next Crown Jewel. Yeah. And boy, are we going to have some thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I... Honestly, that's the only thing I'm looking forward to about Cran Jewel because mm-hmm. I know I'm going to have a lot to say. I'm going to have a lot to bitch. It's the Saudis have the book. Let's see where that ha- where that goes. There you go. It's. I mean, it, it's we're. I've gone all the way through and come out on the other side where I was. I, I've been really angry at WWE, and now. I'm going to take a page from you, Chris. I just don't care. <laughs> no. At this point, it's like scolding a dog. 
Yeah. It's like, stop eating your own poop. Yeah. All right, fine. I it's like I it's like I'm not gonna run out there and knock it out your hand. Uh, knock yeah. it out your mouth. It's, finish Just, up and come inside. <laughs> yeah. So and and that's what WWE is. It is a dog eating its own poop. I want that to stick into your brain. You know, we've been looking Dave, for t-shirt, I have a t-shirt idea. idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's a good segue, dogs. Thank you very much. Uh, we are in the early stages of uh, working on some branded merchandise. And uh, I'm also in the very early stages of realizing I know nothing about branded merchandise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's something that we're going to be working on over the next couple of weeks. When I say we, I mean I. And I might you know, get Shelby from This Is A Takeover in on this as well. Uh, she's better at this shit than I am. And, you know, maybe... Maybe we could ask the uh, the the fans. Uh, yeah, it's time for them to pull their weight. Yeah. Uh, what What do you think? If you've got a an idea for a T shirt, uh, that would be great for this as a work. Uh, hit us up. Well, we were talking today in a group chat, and I said, you know, your quote from one of the very early episodes: "If if you are over three hundred pounds, you're a monster, and I don't want to hear you talk." <laughs> in the context of a wrestling podcast. That makes perfect sense and would make a great Mm t-shirt. Walking around in public wearing a shirt that says, if you're over 300 pounds, you're a monster (laughs) and I don't want to hear you talk. Going to cause uh, some issues. Right. I don't see why. I feel like it's good life (laughs) advice in general. Yeah. There you go. And it's October. It's the spooky month. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. over all you 300 pounders out there, I'm going to need you to pipe down a little bit shut up <laughs> uh yeah so be on the lookout for some branded merch coming out in the next couple of weeks or months we'll we'll plug the hell out of it when it's actually available because we've been talking about getting t-shirts and all you know all kinds of branded shit out there uh, well for three years now yeah and we've got there's even more changes coming after that uh we've got a surprise coming up in what would you say a month or so yeah uh it, yeah sometime in uh november uh over the course of October, I'm going to be gradually moving out of this office that I have been in for the last seven years and have accumulated a lot of stuff in. And uh, we are going to be moving into our new space at uh, Long Walk Studios slash Kayfabe Outpost One. That's right. Where we are going to have a dedicated recording space uh, for the first time with soundproofing and all of that. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get that done in a uh, in, in maybe a month's time. That's what we're pushing for. Yeah, I will be out of here and into the new space in the next month. Now, how long it takes us to get the recording studio set up, uh, God only knows. Hopefully, we'll have that done before the end of the year. Uh, it, it may be that uh, a couple of these podcasts, casts, a couple of these podcasts may be. Uh, just in the house. So well, yeah, it, it'll be in the new in space. In Dogs' house. <laughs> yes, NXT in Dogs' house. It'll be in the new space. I'll give the listeners plenty of advance notice that, you know, until we get the booth set up, the audio quality might dip slightly. Um, but, you know, this podcast sounded really shitty when we first started and people still stuck with us. So I think people can deal with a dip in audio quality for a, a few episodes. Yeah. And it's crown jewels. So, I mean, really, what do you yeah, want to hear about? And it? as for content quality, well, it'll stay the same. So depending on how you feel, that's a win or a loss. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for that segue, because next week and what's probably going to be our last episode in our downtown Rock Hill uh, space well, we're going to be continuing our Christopher Nolan filmography discussion with the film Inception. Oh, this is one of my son's favorite movies. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I We went and saw this on his 18th birthday, and he was like, wow. this." We also went to Carowinds that day. We went. We, we did a few really awesome things that day, and his the favorite moment was we went and saw Inception. That was the best thing that happened that day. Nice. Well, then make sure to tell him to uh, check out next week's episode of Long Walk Podcast. Right on. Uh, But until then, dogs, if the uh, listeners want to reach out to you online or follow you online, where can they do that at? Well, you can get me at Instagram or I've still got a TikTok. uh, There's a few people that follow me. I think I've got like 60 followers, I think. And hardly any of them are spam. So uh, 
Yeah, and that's just at David Two Dogs Hayes. So uh, you can follow me there. Chris, what about you? You can argue with me on Twitter at Chris the OK. All right. Um, well, thanks to Shelby Ray Patterson from This Is a Takeover, we do have an official Instagram, which is Long Walk Podcast. Uh, if you want to follow me online personally, the best place to do that at is also going to be on Instagram at DB Hensley. If you want to keep up with Long Walk Productions, you can visit us online at longwalk.us or you can search for Long Walk Productions and Long Walk Podcasts on Facebook. To hear and see more of our original work or hear past episodes that are no longer streaming, you can follow the YouTube links in the show notes. As always, thank you very much for listening. And if you enjoy the show or any of the shows on this network, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. And for David Hensley, Chris the Fashion Plate Barnes, this is David Two Dogs Hayes saying, guys, if you got out of bed today and you had a job to go to and somebody that cares about you when you get back home, folks, this match is over and you just won via pinfall. Thank you very much for listening to This Is A Work. Do you think Arn Anderson calls his gun the spine buster? Redeem these nuts. <laughs>